Oh, good evening. Your Majesty, good evening. Good morning to you there in London. Uh, yes. I've got four very excited people here this evening uh, who we wish to introduce to you, but to uh, say thank you very much for accepting our request for the call. Uh, when we were thinking through about how we would celebrate your jubilee here, uh, one of my staff thought it would be a good idea, seeing you're unable to travel to Australia, that we might bring Australia to you. And who best to do that than to bring you the four Australians of the year uh, for 2022. So I have with me, of course, uh, Linda. Yes, nice to see you again. Good morning, Your Majesty. And then on my right, uh, Mr. Dylan Olcott, who is the Australian of the Year for 2022. And to his right, uh, Ms. Shanna Wan, who is the local hero of Australia for 2022. And then over on my left, Ms. Val Dempsey, who is our Senior Australian of the Year. And next to her, Dr. Daniel Knorr, who is the Young Australian of the Year. And so we're, as I say, delighted to be here. And coincidentally, this is the exact day 34 years ago that you opened Parliament House here. So we didn't plan, oh. yeah, we didn't plan that, but it occurred. So it might invoke some memories for you of, of your time here. Indeed, trying to avoid that bit of water. Yes, <laughs> down the front there. Yeah. Well, no, inside. I don't know whether it's still there, but there's this little pond inside intrigued me very much indeed. I wondered how many people had fallen into it. <laughs> ah, yes, right in the middle. Sorry, it's a long time since <laughs> yeah. I've been there. <laughs> so I'll start with Dylan as our Australian of the Year. Dylan. Cool. Hi, Your Majesty. Um, thanks for coming to chat to us. This is awesome. Uh, my name's Dylan Alcott, and I still can't believe it, but I got named Australian of the Year for this year, which is just ridiculous. It's such a huge honour. I'm a proud Australian. I think you can see I'm in a wheelchair. I've been in a wheelchair my whole life and was very lucky to win uh, four Paralympic gold medals playing two different sports, wheelchair tennis and wheelchair basketball, um, and won 15 Grand Slam singles titles playing wheelchair tennis. I unfortunately won a couple of Wimbledon titles, beat some Great Britain players, which I was happy about, but maybe you weren't so happy about. And, uh, and my, the reason I get out of bed every day is to to change perceptions so people with disability, people like me can get out and live the lives they deserve to live. And um, I just want to use my platform to shine a light on that, to help employment opportunities, help people get out there and live the lives that they want to live. And to be given this honour to be Australian of the Year, I get emotional talking about it, to be honest, because um, to have any... When I was a young kid, I used to hate myself, Your Majesty, and to see if I thought anybody in a wheelchair, let alone myself, would be Australian of the Year, uh, I wouldn't have believed you. So, yeah, a huge honour. And when I told my mum last night that I was getting to meet you, she cried. How cool is that? So I think I've, I think I've made her very proud as well. So, yeah, a real honour for me to be here today. Thank you. So you, you, you've actually retired, have you, from the old tennis? I'm, I'm retired now, so I'm looking forward to coming to Wimbledon and actually drinking a Pims this time <laughs> rather than playing the whole time, you know what I mean? It's going to be... Oh, right. It's going to be fun, but, uh, yeah, I'm... Uh, I had a great career, but I think it's time for me to, you know, do something else and use my platform to help more people. And um, I'm really well, excited the, about the opportunity. That's wonderful to be helping other people. So that's what you'll be focusing on, is it? Yeah, exactly. Right. I've got a foundation where we help young young people with disability achieve their dreams through university yeah. scholarships, funding startups, all kinds of stuff around Australia, and and really, you know, shining a light on some of the things that people with disability often haven't had the opportunity to do through employment, exactly. mainstream schools, all kinds of stuff, participation in sport. And I've got to give you credit, the London Paralympics changed the game for so many people like me. It, was, it really was one of the best moments of, of my life playing there. And I think the rest of the world has followed suit now. And yeah, I'm, I'm, coming, to, I'm coming to Great Britain to do some work all around the world. I really want to try and do what I've been able to do here, you know, globally now as well, which is, which is pretty cool. Good. Well, that's splendid to hear about that. Good. Thank you, Dylan. And if I could introduce again, Shanna, off to you. Hello, Your Majesty. Thank you so very much for making time to meet us. It's lovely to meet you. This year, I was very fortunate to win the Australian Local Hero of the Year. So that's a category that recognises community grassroots service that is above and beyond. 
for about seven years now, I have committed my entire life and heart and soul to service to the community in a very specific area, which is in rural and remote Australia. And in particular, I work through my charity that I founded, which is called Sober in the Country. And I'm raising awareness around alcohol harm, specifically in rural and remote areas where the barriers of permanent isolation, as we call it, never end. And I suppose it would be fair to say that my passion is to ensure that the people who get up and show up in floods and fires and droughts to feed the rest of this amazing country are supported when they need some help in their own time of need. And tragically, alcohol abuse and indeed addiction is a big issue for us in the bush in Australia. So that is my passion. And I do that because I nearly died about seven years ago from my own battle with alcoholism. So it's a cause very dear to my heart from lived experience. And that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, I think that's marvellous. And, and, and has, I mean, the, during the pandemic, well, that must have been quite difficult to do, wasn't it? The pandemic ended up being an interesting situation for us because actually what it did was it proved what I have been saying to the country, I suppose, and even the globe for a long time now, which is when people are in isolation, the barriers to getting help and support are amplified and exacerbated. And so, in fact, we're kind of the experts in ISO because that's our normal, if you know what I mean. So it's been... Yes, I can, I can see that, yes. It's been an interesting couple of years, Your Majesty. Really I'm interesting. Sure. I'm mm. sure, yes. Mm. Where, whereabouts do you live? So my husband and I and our two dogs and our two horses, I just uh, had to throw that in there because I know you love your dogs <laughs> and horses. So we live uh, in northwestern New South Wales in a little teeny tiny wooden church in the bush. And I travel and speak when I'm not home. Well, that's yes. very interesting to hear about that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Sharon. Very much. Uh, could I introduce uh, Mrs Val Dempsey again? Uh, Val is uh, our Senior Australian of the Year and she could talk about herself, but I could say, Your Majesty, every time I turn up to a disaster <laughs> site, uh, one of the people I bump into is Val, but I'll let her tell her own story. <laughs> Good morning, Your Majesty. What a Good pleasure and an honour to meet you. Well, I'm a very, very long-time volunteer with St John Ambulance Australia. Yes. I'm also a commander in the Order of St John. Are you? I am. And that was conferred on me recently for work that has involved probably over 50 years of being with St John Ambulance. I personally would love to see, and my aim is, that people who are driving vehicles should learn first aid. It's an absolute passion of mine. We had a dreadful um, moment in our family life many years ago that has led me to believe that first aid, bystander first aid at the scene of an accident actually makes a massive big difference. Those five to seven minutes before the ambulance or help arrives the person pulling up at a car accident, if they have first aid training, they can actually save a life. We have something like 40,000 people a year recovering and living with injuries from road trauma. And I would dearly like to be able to promote the idea of learner drivers taking on first aid training as part of their driver's license. Because I, whenever I drive around, um, around where I live here in Canberra, all I can see is other drivers and they're all potential first aiders. I don't see mothers and fathers, I see first aiders. <laughs> <laughs> and so it would be really a wonderful thing if we could inspire all peoples to be able to learn first aid because it will make a marvellous difference right the way across our community. And so for that reason, I'm delighted to have this opportunity to raise that issue. It sounds a very sensible idea too, because obviously it, it does help enormously if one does know something about first aid. Indeed it does, you're quite right. And 
I guess the other thing that I wanted to talk about this today is that recently I had the pleasure of being in our wonderful top north region of New South Wales, where sadly the community up there was devastated in the Lismore Twin Rivers region, the Richmond River flooded and other rivers, and the water rose some 35 feet and wiped out this whole community. I went in as a first aid person to set up a medical unit there. The amazing resilience of that community up there, it really has reinforced the goodness in people and in the human nature. It was such a privilege to be a part of that. Well, it's nice, nice to hear that there are people that are so brave and, and, and welcoming too. Uh, they've been uh, very stoic up there, Your Majesty. It's been yeah. an extremely difficult time. And as I wrote to you, the, actually for those communities, yeah. worse than the bushfires. Uh, it's absolutely yes. terrible. You've had, you've had a terrible lot of rain, haven't you? Yes, and it's continuing, unfortunately. And, and one who had a bit of experience as well as that, if I could introduce uh, Dr. Daniel Noor again, our Young Australian of the Year. Daniel, if you would tell the Majesty your story. Good morning, Your Majesty. It is uh, an absolute honour and privilege um, to be speaking to you and, and to see you live. Um, my name is Daniel Noor. I'm currently a doctor uh, working in one of Sydney's largest hospitals where I've been working for the last three years. Um, the reason I was awarded Young Australian of the Year was I founded a service called Streetside Medics. Um, it is a mobile medical service that is providing GP-led medical access to those who are experiencing homelessness and those that are vulnerable. And it was actually an idea which started when I was a medical student at the Imperial College in London. I came across a gentleman who was having a seizure um, at Waterloo just outside of the train station. And after that interaction, I learnt that for people experiencing homelessness, there are a number of quite significant and challenging barriers that limit access to healthcare. And the result of that limited access to healthcare is the health outcomes for those experiencing homelessness are very poor. Uh, there are people with medical conditions that I as a doctor know that I can treat and that are preventable. Um, but the challenge was getting to see a doctor or getting to the hospital. And when I returned to Australia, I realized that despite us having one of the, the world's best healthcare services, we also had a number of those challenging barriers that limit access to healthcare. So what we've developed is, is a van which we've custom built as a mobile medical centre full of medical equipment and consumables. We have a team of over 200, 300 general practitioners and then about 6,000 volunteers. And we take our vans all across New South Wales and soon to be Australia. And we ensure that anyone who is experiencing homelessness or vulnerable has access to healthcare with absolutely no cost uh, and no barriers limiting that access. And our service is, is very much one driven by need. And an example of that need was Lismore, where there was, as, as mentioned, devastating floods. And what the floods yes. caused was medical centres were destroyed. General practitioners lost their ability to see patients. But worse, patients lost their ability to see doctors. And we just needed to do something about it. And for me as a doctor, it is the most fulfilling work. I mean, I still work in one of the largest hospitals. I'm training to do cardiology, hopefully soon. Uh, but there is nothing more fulfilling than serving those who are experiencing homelessness. Well, I think that sounds wonderful work to be doing. Mm. Well, well it's very nice to meet these very special Australians. Your Majesty, this, uh, I often use the phrase when we're travelling around about people with an enormous heart for community, and that's what you see yes. here. And another phrase we often use in Government House is about richness of spirit in the Australian people. And I know the, the floods triggered a... A little story Linda might want to tell you about some children we met in Brisbane. It was a, their family owned um, a delicatessen, like a very um, upmarket delicatessen. And it did suffer some of the flooding, but they were able to save a lot of their produce. And when we met them, they were up and running again. And they had three delightful children. And those children... Yes they decided that they would bake some cakes and make some sandwiches and sell these, these, this delicious food and donate the money to the flood cause. That's splendid, isn't that? No, I think the, uh, you know, the combined view that this four have 
of different aspects of life in Australia, work that still needs to be done in our society to level the playing field for people. Uh, Shanna's work uh, with alcoholism in the bush is absolutely vital because you know, people in isolation and so forth, they, they turn to alcohol and, and her desire is that when people go into the bar or the first response to a problem is not to go to a beer, it's to go and seek help and she can provide that. And for a community to accept the choice that not drinking yeah. is absolutely drinking is okay. Yeah. Embracing, drink. embracing yeah. some change. Yeah. And the, the changes that Dylan can... Uh, Dylan is one of the most well-known faces in Australia. Oh. And... Uh, not the best looking, I see. I was going to say, that's a big call. But <laughs> uh, one of the, the most well-known faces. And you know, he has at the moment this enormous... He's getting 200 invitations a day or requests a day to go and speak to organisations and people. So he's got tremendous potential to change people's views about disability in Australia. And Val is the epitome of volunteerism. She's a dynamo. 50 years uh, in St John. It's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, a real stalwart. And, um, yes, ma'am. But not 70 years like you, ma'am, though. But 50 is getting close. <laughs> I, have, I have a few years yet to catch up yeah. with you, I think. <laughs> I thought you were by 20. And Daniel, of course, uh, again, an enormous heart for uh, people who go without. And as Daniel says, it's those simple illnesses that the people have that are quite treatable, which are quite limiting to them in trying to you know, break out of homelessness. So I, I hope you've enjoyed um, getting a, a, a sense of what, modern, what, what are the issues in modern day Australia that people are really worried about and working on. And we've got four extraordinary people here who are well, helping out. Seems like it. And it's been wonderful to have I mean, how lucky we get technology and I can speak to you all, mm. which is mm. splendid nowadays, isn't it? So it's been very interesting to hear about all the very important work which they're doing. Which Thank you, I hope they'll yeah. continue. continue. There's, there's also great internet at the palace because it is beautiful reception. <laughs> it's coming through very good. The technology is great. Good. I'm glad because there's a whole lot of things happening outside the window and you can't hear it. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> It's, it, and this technology is getting better. And anyway, it's very nice to meet, meet you all. But thank you very much for your time. And uh, again, it's been uh, just a, a lovely opportunity to catch up to, to celebrate what has been a magnificent 70 years. And uh, Australians are, uh, I think, full of joy for what's coming up in terms of the celebrations and uh, just wishing you well. Uh, over that period and uh, you never know we might even get over there to celebrate. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's, let's nice go. to see you again. <laughs> yes. Righto. Lovely Thanks. to see you all.